I don't have many bad commission stories. Part of that is because I've been lucky to have really awesome clients over the years, but a bigger part of it is because I don't really take commissions that much. And when I do, it's in the very rare instance when me having the free time and me needing the money happen to overlap. I've opened commissions twice, maybe three times in the last couple of years. Anyway, all this is to say, I don't have a lot of bad client stories to tell because I don't have a lot of clients in general. There's, of course, the Sew Me a Life Size Anime Girl plushie story from a few videos ago, but besides that, I got nothing. Or at least that's what I thought. But a few weeks ago, I randomly remembered an old story from high school about what was probably one of my first commissions ever. And it may or may not have involved me being commissioned to draw not safe for work art as a minor. And it's, it's a story. It was awkward and I'm gonna talk about it. But hey, speaking of not safe for work art, let's do our usual, hey star, what you drawing? So a while back, I made a joke on Twitter that one day I was gonna open a not safe for work art tier on my Patreon, but that instead of poaching like, you know, raunchy, not safe for work art, it would just be a bunch of drawings of my webcomic characters committing OSHA violations because it's, it's not safe for work. Get it? <laughs> anyway, April Fool's Day is this month and I decided now would be a perfect time to get this nonsense out of my system by drawing a bunch of OSHA violations from my comics monthly mail club. You can get this month's stickers in print by joining my Patreon during the month of April. And since April is also the webcomics eighth anniversary month, I have a special offer where patrons can purchase stickers and prints from past mail club sets for this month only. Details and links are all down in the description. All right, now that that's all said and done, let's get into the story, shall we? I got into making comics pretty early. My very first comics were done in fifth grade on lined notebook paper ripped out of composition notebooks and hastily stapled together. Eventually, I upgraded to having a dedicated sketchbook just for comic strips, and I was always sketching and doodling little comics on scrap paper and even assignments during class. I even made comics and storyboards for class projects if I could find a way to justify doing it. All this is to say, I was the comic artist kid and anybody who knew me even a little bit probably knew that. Cut to my high school art class. The art teacher at my high school was one of those hard-ass teachers who let us be creative, but sometimes came down really hard in critiques. Basically, she was pretty hard to please. At least for me, anyway. Maybe it was just me not being an especially good artist. I didn't start taking art classes until high school, and I was really far behind a lot of the other kids in class skill-wise. I wasn't very good at or experienced with painting, watercolors were and still are the absolute bane of my existence, and acrylics are just such a nightmare to work with. I was okay at pencil drawing, but my anatomy was bad and I couldn't draw a realistic portrait to save my life. So most of the projects I turned in for art class were pretty main quality. I wasn't the worst artist in the world, I just wasn't very good at or passionate about stuff like landscapes and portraits and whatever, which is what a lot of our projects ended up being. Like, I was super lucky if one of my pieces made it onto the wall outside the art room. It only happened a handful of times that I remember. It was honestly pretty demoralizing, if I'm honest. I was good at drawing little comics and characters, sure, but I wasn't really able to make good art, quote unquote, like the other kids in my class. I was aspiring to go to art school and become an animator one day, but if I couldn't even draw as well as the other kids in my class, would I ever be good enough to reach that goal? I tried not to let that kind of thing bother me too much, but those thoughts definitely weighed on me back then. Until in my junior year of high school, we were given an assignment that felt like a gift from the heavens. We were tasked with drawing a comic page. But this wasn't like draw a single comic strip and be done with it, no. This was a project and it was expected that we would take several weeks to do it. We were expected to fill a full piece of 24 by 36 inch poster board with one giant comic and tell a full story with it. And I swear, I heard the angels sing that day. 
finally, finally, after years of being in the solid middle tier artist skill level in class, I had finally been given a project I could really throw myself into. Something I was passionate about, something I was actually good at. And oh boy, throw myself into it I did. I wrote an entire little story, sketched 30-ish panels onto my poster board, inked it with the Micron inking pens I owned, and colored all of it with the set of Copic markers I had gotten for Christmas a few years before. Yeah, side note, this project is the reason why most of my Copic markers are dead. Rest in peace, I'm too cheap to buy refills for them. Heh. <laughs> We were given a few weeks to make our comic posters, and if I remember right, I was one of the only kids in class who even finished theirs. A lot of the better artists in class apparently really struggled with the project, and as petty as it is, it actually felt nice to see them struggle with something I was good at for once. But, uh, listen, call me petty all you want. Little me took her wins where she could get them. Eventually, we finished our comic poster projects and handed them in. I actually still have this drawing because my mom saved it. It's gotten a little messed up over the years because it was curled up in storage, but there it is in all its slightly rumpled glory. <laughs> anyway, I turned in my comic feeling pretty proud of myself, and my teacher, who had always been really hard on me up until that point, was actually kind of impressed. And I know this for a fact, because not long after my comic project was finished, my comic ended up not just being hung on the wall outside the art room, oh no. It was actually mounted and displayed in the fancy art case by the front doors of the school. Like, if you walked into the main entrance of my high school, that display case was one of the first things you'd see, and my comic was the biggest thing in it. And it stayed there for a while. Long enough for the navy blue poster board it was mounted on to get bleached completely gray by the light in the display case. So yeah, it was pretty noticeable and notable, and a very big confidence booster for little me. It was pretty cool. And it eventually leads us into our main story. One day in art class, I'm minding my own business, working on a project and chatting with friends, when the teacher calls me over to her desk. Turns out that my teacher would sometimes get emails from people who were looking for artists for whatever reasons. Things like, we want to paint a mural on the wall of this elementary school and we think it'd be cool if an art student did it. Or, we're holding an art contest for high schoolers, can you pass along the info to any students who might be interested? And that kind of thing. And that day, she had gotten an email from someone who was looking for, of all things, a comic artist. He was apparently a comic writer who was looking for an artist who could draw the pages for a story he was going to have pitched to major comic publications. And since my teacher knew about my love of comics, because of the aforementioned comic project, I was the first and only person that she came to about the offer. And I was hyped. Now, stop. Let's just hold back for a second, because some of you might already be picking up on the red flags. If I had gotten this offer today, I would have been skeptical at best. I would have needed to follow up with, how big is this project? How many pages am I expected to draw? Are they going to be inked? Colored? Am I doing all the artwork or just the pencils? How much does it pay per page? Is it hourly or is it on a per page rate? And a ton of other questions to suss out if this was like a legitimate offer or not. But I currently have years and years of experience with this kind of thing. 16-year-old me did not. 16-year-old me heard the words professionally published comic and just about passed out from joy. I thought this would be my big break. I thought this was going to be how I broke into the comics industry. At 16? I was over the freaking moon. So I told my teacher that yes, I was absolutely interested, and she gave me his information so I could contact him when I got home. I spent the rest of the day absolutely vibrating in my desk chair, waiting to get home so I could contact this guy about the project. I emailed him, told him who I was, and that my teacher had given me his information, and I asked for more details on the project. He replied back pretty quickly, introducing himself and giving me a bit more info. Now, unfortunately, these emails were exchanged from a long-dead email address I no longer have access to, so I can't do any dramatic readings or anything because the actual emails have been lost to time. 
I've also forgotten some of the details about the project and also maybe misremembering some things, but here is what I remember. I can't remember if he had any actual experience as a professional published comic writer. And to be honest, considering the way he was trying to recruit an artist, I'm going to assume he probably didn't. But the comic would be a pilot issue of a new series he wanted to pitch to publishers. He asked for samples of my work, so I just sent him the link to my DeviantArt page since I didn't really have a portfolio. He replied back saying that my style wasn't exactly what he was looking for and asked if I could emulate the style of Tank Girl, which... Yeah, my art style wasn't anything even remotely close to that, but I told him I'd be willing to give it a shot because, again, I thought this was my chance to break into the comics industry. I was willing to bend over backwards if I had to. However, he had one other stipulation. The subject matter of the comic was apparently going to be pretty mature, and that apparently included several scenes of, well, let's say that I would need to draw some spicy sleepovers, some two-person push-ups, some incredibly raunchy and very explicit illustrations of the bone zone. Uh, he didn't, like, go into specifics or anything, thank God, but he was very open about the fact that there would be very, very much, uh, not safe for work, horizontal tangoing happening in this comic, and he asked if I would be comfortable drawing that kind of thing. And it is at this point that I will remind you, I was 16, a junior in high school, still very much a minor, and a pretty sheltered one at that. I had friends who read spicy fanfics and watched rated R movies and made jokes about her <laughs> opening the gates of Mordor and all that, but I was very much not into that kind of thing, like, at all, even a little bit, and I'm still not, which is why my comic doesn't really have any romance in it. Read castoff-comic.com, by the way, link is in the description, wink. <laughs> I never drew characters even holding hands, let alone kissing, and especially not anything more than that. So yeah, safe to say, I was not comfortable being asked to draw characters going for a roll in the hay. Not even a little bit. Just because I was curious, while writing this video, I did a very brief Google search just to kind of, you know, find out if paying minors to draw naughty nighttime shenanigans is even legal. And the answer I got was that it technically isn't illegal, but it certainly isn't, like, ethically good, which, yeah, I, I, I can agree with that. Yeah, not a, not a good thing to, not a, not a good, not a good thing to do. <laughs> so instead of responding to him, I thankfully ended up talking to my teacher about it the next day. She asked if I had gotten in touch with the guy, and I told her yes, and also told her about the kinds of things he had expected me to draw. And she was livid. Remember how I said this teacher was a bit of an angry hard ass? Yeah, she looked about ready to kill a man when I told her about the email exchange. She was furious that the guy had even contacted her at all, considering that she was a high school teacher, meaning that he was actively trying to recruit high school students to draw comics that included, you know, making the beast with two backs. <laughs> Anyway, my teacher told me point blank to not send this guy any more emails, do not respond to him, break off communications, and that she would take care of it from there. Which may have just meant she sent him a scathing email back and then warned some other teachers in the district about this guy, but I like to imagine that maybe, just maybe, she hunted him down for sport. I don't know either way, because that was the last I heard about it, and that was the end of my interactions with the dude but it's fun to think about sometimes. Thinking back on this whole mess now just makes me think that this guy was some desperate writer who was really, really trying to break into comics but had no good way to pay for an artist. So we just started scrounging for literally anyone who would take on free work without too much of a fight. This was back in the very early days of social media, well before I had a Facebook and I don't even think Twitter existed yet. DeviantArt forums were a thing, but if you were a comics guy who didn't know how to utilize the internet to its fullest potential, emailing random high school art teachers is 
Certainly a way to try and get a cheap artist for your comic. I guess. But if I'm being really and completely honest, if he hadn't scared me off by asking me to draw some uncensored Sims woohoo action, I probably would have done it. I would have been so excited about the possibility of being published that I'd have spent a lot of time and effort working on this comic for this guy that probably would never have gotten published and I almost definitely wouldn't have gotten paid for. And this story would have had a much more depressing ending, probably. But instead, my art teacher had my back, cut that nonsense off at the pass, and I still managed to break into making comics by just, you know, making an obscene amount of comics and brute forcing my way in. <laughs> and sure, maybe I haven't been traditionally published or anything, but I've got so many awesome readers who love my work, I make a decent amount on Patreon directly from those folks who are willing and able to support me, and I get to draw my own characters every week and get paid for it. So I'd still say I'm pretty successful. And I didn't have to draw some dude's barely disguised fetish art to get there either, so that is a net positive from me. Moral of the story is, don't take on art projects if you aren't getting paid. Don't take job offers from random dudes who are okay with commissioning high schoolers to draw raunchy ruckus. And if you want to make comics, just freaking do it. Because seriously... Who's going to stop you? And that's the story of my creepiest commission. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A couple things at the end here. Number one is that I am currently taking questions for an eventual Q&A video I'll be making. So if you have any questions about my videos, my art, my comic, or just me in general, leave them in the comments and they might get answered in the video. Second is that if you guys want to learn how to make a webcomic of your very own, I have a book I wrote called How to Webcomic, and the second edition is going to be hitting Kickstarter very, very soon. Depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be live, so check the description for a link to the Kickstarter campaign. And lastly, like I said at the start, this art was done for my webcomics April 2023 mail club set. If you'd like to snag the art for yourself, plus get a ton of other bonuses like your name in the credits of my videos and getting to read my comic pages over a month early, you can do so at patreon.com slash castoff. And if you'd like to know more about the characters you just saw me draw for 20 minutes, you can read my webcomic castoff for free at castoff-comic.com. Link is down below. Okay, that's all for me. Take care, friends, and I will catch you next time. Bye!